Welcome to Next Game's Odyssey series. This video covering the Shield JLNM Kalunga. Now in this video, I'll go into the Kalunga battle strategy, and then show you a battle example of my only fight against Kalunga where I was successful, but it was a pretty epic finish. We will do all of this on the ninja job with the warrior sub job. Now before I get into exactly what you're supposed to expect from Kalunga, I wanted to bring something up, and that is Embu's the other weak to slashing NM in Atonement 3. Now I'd intended to uncovering him first as I wanted access to the Red Mage and Summoner gear that he offers once beaten. Now sadly, in my first two attempts, I was very successful with the exact strategy that I'm about to go over for Kalunga, so the same strategy will work on Embus. However, there is a single ability that he uses called Timber that does four to 7,000 AoE damage to everyone in his 20 foot range, and it's used randomly any time under 50%. Now Migawari sadly will not negate this damage in any way. Now that I have beaten Kalunga, I actually intend to go back and do more Embu's attempts in hopes that I can get an occurrence of him not using Timber under 50%. I say all of this so that you understand that the strategy that I'm about to go over, including all of the triggers, will work on Embu's just as well as it works on Kalunga. But your success on beating Embu's will entirely depend on the use of that move called Timber. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into what this actual battle strategy looks like for Kalunga. Kalunga is an enemy from the Gabrath family. He uses fire-based spells that will increase in potency as his hit points drop, but normally they all hit for around 500 AoE damage, or 1,000 single hit damage. He also can cast Addle and is weak to slashing and water damage. Now during the fight, a window for a red stagger will open, after Blistering Roar ability is used. Now after this ability is used, the next skill chain done after it will cause a red stagger. You then need to continue that skill chain to a third step to cause a blue stagger. Note, if this ability is used again later on in that same fight, you will need to do an additional step on that second one. So now you'll need to trigger Red Proke on that first skill chain, and then only after completing two more steps of that skill chain will you get the blue proke. For Ninja, I recommend the combo of 10 Kamu Shun, or if you need a 4 step, 10 Kamu Shun Shun. Now he does not have traditional standard attacks. Instead, they come in three forms. Bite is a single target and defense down attack. Charge is a conal frontal damage attack that inflicts stun and knockback. And Spin, which is an AoE physical damage and knockback ability. Now due to this, Trust Placement can help with this fight. My particular trust placement is very poor in my battle example, and it does work, but you can make life easier on yourself with a bit of repositioning. However, note that time is critical in these fights if you're soloing it, so don't take too long to reposition, or you might run out of time. Let's go ahead and move on to the abilities now. The ones you'll see are Pyroclastic Surge, which is an AoE damage with Addle effect, Volcanic Stasis, which is a conal damage, full dispel and stun ability, Searing Serration, which is a 4-hit single target attack that inflicts all attributes down. Tyrannical Blow is an AoE damage attack that inflicts Plague and knocks you back quite a distance. The next ability can be an annoying one in this fight, which is Batholic Shell. Now this will give Kalunga Blaze Spikes, Haste, an attack boost, a magic attack boost, and a very potent stone skin that if you're just using standard attacks, will take you 30 seconds to a minute to get through. Therefore, this can really slow down your fight. He uses this three times back to back in the middle of my run, and it really slows down my damage until I can get past all three of those stone skins. The next ability is Incinerating Lahar, which will inflict AoE damage, weakness, and knockback. You want to wait till the weakness wears off before charging back in if you don't have Megawari up, as you will have very low hit points and can die, potentially, to one of his spells or abilities. Now, weakness normally lasts about 15 seconds, so you don't have to wait too long. Careful of putting up Megawari when weakness is up, as once you do that, you're now going to have over a 2 minute recast timer on Megawari. Blistering Roar is the final ability, and this is an AoE damage and terrorize ability. It will also open the Red Stagger window. The first skill chain after this will cause a Red Stagger. Continuing it to a third step will cause the Blue Stagger. Now, I know lots of those abilities sound really nasty. But with a high enough MM level, your trust should handle it better than you do. My current level is 28 in this battle example. If you have 45, which is the maximum, you will have an even easier time than you see in this video. 
Likewise, if for whatever reason you have a Mog level closer to level 1, you'll have a more difficult time keeping your trust alive than you'll see in my battle example, so make sure you keep this in mind. Now in regards to strategy on this one, like I said earlier, make sure you keep Migawari up at all times in case you get weakened or cursed. That is rule number one on this one, and frankly it's more important than your shadows, as frankly your shadows really aren't blocking that much. If you can keep Migawari up, this is a pretty easy fight, as your trusts are normally in no real danger given a proper MM level. And Feebles did not land as usual, so no need to even try those on this NM. Keep your enmity low at all times so you don't pull hate, and from my experience, Shun Shun spam was getting the best damage overall. Just make sure you swap to your 3-step when the red stagger window opens. Skill chains do very poor damage on this one, so really the only reason you're doing them is for that stagger. Now for trust, I choose to use Arky V to tank. I would use August as a backup and Amchu to back him up if August were to die. We're going to use Arcelia for haste and AoE cure. Now if Arcelia is to die, we will summon Koru or King of Hearts in her place. Now this next one is the most important. In my battle example, I use Joaquin in an attempt to haste cap myself to make it easier to pull off those multi-step skill chains. Do not do this. In all three times that I've tested with him, he simply uses army pay on songs for the entire fight. Additionally, you will often run out of MP since you don't have Yoren with you, so I cannot emphasize enough that Sethtus is who you want for the AoE cure and HP MP restoration in this fight, not Joaquim. Now it is possible that Olmia will do better, but the need for Sethtus is too great in these fights in my opinion, so really just plan on bringing in a dual wield 20 set to make sure you are haste capped. I am confident that if I had summoned Sethtust instead of Joaquim at the beginning of this fight, that the end of the battle example wouldn't have been nearly as exciting as it turned out. The last two trusts we're using is Monboro and Kupipi for cures. Now if either of those two die, we'll summon Chirukiki. And note that Yignis is definitely a much better healer than Kupipi, but I sadly haven't unlocked Yignis yet, so if you have Yignis, go ahead and use him in place of Kupipi. Okay, that should be all you need to know to take on Kalunga and potentially Embu's if you want to give it a chance. Let's go ahead and see what a battle example looks like. Enjoy the run, everyone. Make sure you stick around for the end to see a pretty epic finish.
That was certainly unfortunate. Everything looked good, but we obviously ran out of MP. There at 3% to go. Had Sethtus been with us, I'm sure it would have been a much easier fight, and he would have used Rejuvenation at least once or twice by now, making it a non-issue. However, we still have 2 minutes and 20 seconds left. This is why I put up re-raise, and this is also why I pull all of my NMs down to here. So that, even after I die, we can go up there and give it another chance. Now, with Embu's, for whatever reason, he regens to 100% on both of my tests. However, all three other NMs, when I've done this, have always remained at the same hit point level. So what we do is we put re-raise back up, go within 20 feet so a Kalunga aggros us, then quickly run back outside of 20 feet and use Majin Galkri as we do it. You have to be very quick, because about two seconds after you engage, he is going to cast normally an AoE spell that would kill you. That's also why you suddenly put up Nigawari, just in hopes that would save me if that happened to occur. Now that we're back up, we go ahead and resummon a tank trust and a white mage trust so that we can get started. We have a minute and 26 seconds left. Let's see what we can accomplish here. Obviously not the prettiest battle example, but I decided to go ahead and show it just to emphasize the fact that you should never give up. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.